Hello and welcome back to the EBS50 tutorials. Today we're going to talk about the advanced database options. In the previous episodes and in the quick start, we showed that in the EBS50 there is a MySQL database server running with a demonstration database. And right now I'm looking at the product database that you get by default. In the uh, basics on the database, I showed you how you can edit it with the uh, little pencil symbol to edit it row for row and how you can upload new information through the API. But there are also more advanced options. For instance, uh, if you want to create a completely new database, you can say I want to actually upload a CSV file. And that CSV file can be one that you created yourself or one from the uh, uh, list of uh, dummies that we have in the EBS toolkit. So you can just choose a file like the one from the toolkit, one of the examples, upload the file, and then you can use a CSV database. Or you can configure an SFTP connection and then you can say uh, a server location where the CSV files can be found. And you can say, well, I've got a host name, a username and a password, and I want to update it with this interval. But those are just CSV files. What if you have your own complete database server already running and you want to use that? Well, in that case, we offer a variety of options. We already have the built-in MySQL database, which you can provide with new information. But if you have your own external database, you can say, well, I want to configure an SQL connection. Now, I have a, a database running in this office at a fixed IP address. a username and password and once the credentials are verified we can connect to that database now it looks quite similar to the one we already have and it already asserts itself ah, the barcode column is the one that has the uh, primary key and that's correct now we just have to tell the ESL server where we can find the description column and description is used, for instance, in the uh, ESL list, where it says that MAC address is connected to this product and it uses the product description name for ease of use. And we need to say which field we want to use as the ID. An ID needs to be a unique value in the product database that you can use to connect ESLs to products, uh, a one-to-one -one link. So these need to be unique. Well, the product ID is a unique column and we can save those changes and go to the next step in the wizard and this is the interesting part you can either have an entirely external database and the ESL server needs a couple of uh, tables of course it uses the product data to get information that it wants to show on ESLs but it will also need to store which ESL is linked to what product, a link table. And it also logs any issues in a couple of logging tables. Now you can uh, have those all internally as it is when you get the unit, or you can have it all externally, or you can have an in-between, a hybrid database. If you want to use your external existing database only to supply the ESL server with product information, you can say, I only want it to pull products and nothing else. Every other table for links and for logging and event handler, any other table that it needs will be stored on the EBS 50. And you can do that by saying, well, I want to configure this line by saying I want to update every, let's say, 30 seconds because we've got a good connection to the beta database and I'm not really concerned about the amount of data that I'm using. I also want to immediately update the ESLs when uh, changes to the data are made in the ESL server, so on this side of the equation. And I also want to 
reload the data when the application restarts. For instance, if you take out the uh, cable, uh, power cable from the unit, plug it back in, once the unit boots up, the application boots up too, and this will also make it reload all of the data from the database during boot up. It will increase your boot time, so use it carefully. Then we can say how we want to synchronize with the uh, product database. Well, you can say by default, the entire data table will be uh, copied every 30 seconds during that interval. That will use a, a lot of data, of course, but you will always make sure that every single line of data that you have in your product database is synchronized with your EBS 50. Now, if you have tens of thousands of records and only a couple of hundred of them are actually in use in the store, you can say, well, only update the linked product information. That way the ESL server says, okay, in my link tables, I know that these unique IDs from the product table are in use, and it will request the external, ESL, uh, the external SQL database only information on those records. This is the one that I'm going to use, staging and trigger. This allows you to uh, add a couple of triggers to the database, which means that once you do a change on the uh, external SQL database, a trigger is also added to tell ESL server once data has changed, whether that change comes from the ESL server itself, through the uh, little pencil icon and editing products, or more importantly, if another third party has changed the information say that uh, head office has changed the price of products and they change that in the product database, that trigger will make sure that the product database will also send a signal to the ESL server, hey, there's just been an update, just to let you know, and the update happened on these records. And the last one is the same, staging and triggers, but only for the linked products, so that way a, a reload will only happen if the trigger uh, has a record that is actually in use at the system. We're going to do staging a trigger and choose that. And then this is the step where you can decide whether you want an entirely external database or internal database uh, for the local tables. So the top one says, okay, um, the additional tables, links, and logs will all be stored locally on a simple SQLite server. I can store them on the same SQL server that I have already connected to, the external one, or yet another SQL server so that you have one server for your product information and another server for the rest. Well, I'm going to make a hybrid database, so I'm going to say I want to store everything locally. Everything that this EBS50 needs to maintain the labels here in this physical store are also on this physical unit. And I keep my external database clean. Then we can go to the next step. Now that we've said that there is an external database and it has a product stable, we also need to tell the ESL server what our rights are. If we make changes to products, but we're not actually allowed to change the external database because the user uh, account that we logged in on the server with doesn't have those rights, we can say it is a read-only database. You can still make changes, but the changes will be stored locally. If you are allowed to actually edit the information, you can just say read write and it will edit the external database. So let's say it's a read only. I can only get information from the external database. I'm not allowed to touch it. Well, that's just fine. But then there is of course the issue what you want to do when it syncs. Because the EBS 50 can keep its own records of locally made edits and once it synchronizes with the uh, original data source, what do you want it to do? Well, you can say, I want to replace it if the remote 
data changes. Basically that means I've made an edit to the original file and as long as that file on the database server doesn't change, we can ignore it. We want to keep our own change. For instance, it says that a product has this price, but we're like, no, in this store it's that price. And as long as that external price doesn't change, we can just say, well, ignore it, I'm going to keep my own edit. But if the external one gets a change in price, we can say, well, in that case, the remote data has changed, let me wipe the uh, local change that I made. You can also say, never replace. No matter what that external data does, keep the local one, never make any updates. Or you can say, always replace, which basically means in our case, we said sync every 30 seconds, we can make an edit, and then after 30 seconds, the database synchronizes and our local changes are wiped. So, of course, there is a use case for it, but we're not going to use it right now because we have such a high synchronization rate with our database. We're going to say replace it, but only if it has changed on the external source. And then we can submit all of these settings. The ESL server will now store them and use these uh, as our new product database. The connection has been made and we can view the new table on our product page. And if I now go to products, ah, and of course, since we're connected to a new database, we also have a new user login system. That is also one of the uh, data tables that it needs to store. So we're asked to log in again. And here we go, our external database. And how do I know it's the external one? Well, because of all of these records. These are the records of the items that we have in our store here. And that external data source is the original one that has all of the information on the prices of these articles. And we are now connected to that external source for our product information. But any link that we make, any log that is made, any user that is added or removed from the system is all stored on the system itself, making sure that our external product database stays clean. This was the advanced topic on databases. Thank you for watching. We have a lot more tutorials. You can find the playlist in the description. If you have any questions about the EBS 50, you can contact Opticon. The contact details are in the description as well. Thank you for watching and see you next time.